Okay. I uh, hope everybody can hear me on, clearly online. Uh, that's okay. Um, good, 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 good. Um, it's a good Monday morning so far. Uh, have that, uh, Princess, keep that mic with you. Uh, make sure that it's working. Um, so if there are any passages of scripture that I'd like you to read, uh, just read it through the mic. And so we can, either you or someone can uh, read it. Okay. Awesome. Okay, um, let's get started uh, right away. Um, so, so far in the last class, we studied about how Jesus came to do the Father's works, right? Uh, and the list of things uh, that he did. And uh, time and time again, uh, we looked at the Gospel of John, and uh, it's just something beautiful that stood out. We've read the Gospel so many times. At least. I've read the Gospel of John before, but uh, I was just preparing for this class as the sessions. Uh, I mean, just something just stands out. One of the things was, uh, it's such a beautiful love letter between the father and the son. The father saying, I love you, and the son saying, I love you more. <laughs> it's one of those things, right? And then how he taught us that he Jesus showed that father loves us the same the way he loves his son. And then Jesus teaching us we can love the father just like, you know, he loved the father. And so in everything that he came to do, Jesus, uh, by you know, but dying for our sins, destroying the works of the devil in everything that he did, he came to reveal the Father to us, isn't it? And that's basically what we looked at the previous chapter. Uh, Jesus did not do anything that he uh, did not see the Father do. He spoke what the Father told him to speak, uh, right? And um, that should be uh, the prayer of our lives uh, in our walk, in every in any area of ministry that we are called to do, um, right? So just to speak and pray over what's in the heart of God, right? That's basically what we've uh, covered so far. Um, what we'd like to do today in um, this class is start from chapter four. It's page 81 on uh, in, in the PDF and page 122 in your Hard copies, if you have a hard copy. Page 81. Okay. Right, so in this chapter, uh, to give, a, give us a gist, uh, everybody okay? Yeah? Is Jira all fine? Anything? Any questions or something? Okay. Cool. Um, good, good. All right. Um, so in this chapter, we look at uh, learning to minister healing and deliverance from Jesus. It's not from me, okay? I'm not teaching you. Okay, uh, we're going to learn to minister healing and deliverance from Jesus. So basically, we will be looking at his life once again. And again, please keep in mind that some of the points uh, would always would, would already be the points that we've already spoken or discussed, right? Uh, it would just be a reiteration of uh, of what we've already learned. But I'm going to request you to keep an open mind, open heart, uh, as we learn these things again. Okay, so. Uh, don't be like, okay, you know, I already learned this point. Why am I learning this again? Uh, maybe something new can stand out out of this. Okay. Um, so in this chapter, um, there are seven principles or guidelines or points uh, that we will look at at how Jesus went about, uh, you know, ministering healing and deliverance. Now, out of the seven points, uh, the five points uh, are taken from uh, a sermon called the Thrill of Victory by Randy Clark. Uh, anybody heard of Randy Clark before? Uh, so uh, he he's he uh, he's a wonderful man of God who has this uh, ministry called the Global Awakening, um, and it, it's a healing ministry. Uh, he's devoted his life for ministry of healing and deliverance, and uh, it's from one of his sermons called the Thrill of Victory, which has been kind of. Um, uh, and few and two more points have been added uh, to his sermon, and and that's what we will be looking at. Okay, so the seven principles uh, mentioned, uh, what we will be learning from this chapter, is the will of God, uh, the exercise of faith, the flow of compassion, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, dealing with the issue of sin and salvation, 
uh, the methods Jesus used and the nature of uh, Jesus's healings and miracles. Okay. Um, yeah, are you all with me? So the will of God, the exercise of faith, the flow of compassion and all of it. Okay. So this is what we'll be looking at this chapter. Now, before we get into the principles of, you know, how Jesus functioned, there are two, uh, there, there's one simple point that I want us to remember is uh, in all, these are all principles in the way that Jesus functioned. Okay. And we are going to call it as norm. Everybody say norm. It's just another word for normal normal right okay so it's okay just a normal sunday morning or a normal monday morning nothing out of the extraordinary is happening right so uh, these are the principles that we are expected to do work in because jesus moved, worked in it keep that in mind those those are called what norm but at the same time there are exceptions okay they're called exceptions that is Okay, now all of these principles may seem like, okay, this is how Jesus functioned. And so this is how I'm going to expect him to function for the rest of eternity. Uh, that would not be wise. Okay, so very quickly, let's just go to uh, Psalm 115. Okay, let's go to Psalm 115. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, I hope it's Psalm 115, 115. <laughs> Oh boy, I'm missing my Bible so much. Okay, yeah, it's Psalm 115, um, verse 3. Can someone read it? Psalm 115, verse 3. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Nickel. Uh, Sean, do you mind reading it into the mic? Uh, okay. Thanks, Nickel. Psalm 115. Is on? That's on. It's on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Psalm 115, verse 5. 3. So it was 3. Our God is in heaven. He does whatever He wishes. Okay. <laughs> he does whatever He wishes. Okay. So I want you all to keep that in mind. Okay. So while there are these normal principles that Jesus functioned in and the same fun principles that He expects us to function in, we should never forget that our God is in heaven. He does whatever He pleases or whatever He wishes. Those are the exceptions, okay? So don't let the exceptions kind of alarm you. It's like, oh, I thought he said only this. I thought he will move only like this. Right? Remember, guys, he is God. He will do whatever he wants to do. If you're not okay with it, <laughs> find a way to be okay with it, okay? Because there's nothing you can do that will change, okay? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I hope that's clear. All right. So the first principle is the will of God. Once again, that same point, right? We've established many, many times, multiple times in this course is, is it the will of God to heal people? And the people said, yes. oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so yeah, Jesus eliminated every single doubt on God's will for healing, isn't it? Um, um, you know, we never said, okay, let me pray and see if it's God's will, you know, it's like, uh, I, I hear this with a lot of young people a lot, uh, especially during this time of Valentine's time, you know, it's like, uh, you know, this boy came and proposed to me and I, you know, I'm going to pray and see if this is the will of God, if he's the one for my life and stuff like that. We don't, we don't do that. Okay. You have to do that, but you don't do that when you have to pray for someone. Okay. Anand. <laughs> this, <laughs> Okay, um, so it's it's very clear that it's it's Jesus's will uh, to heal everyone, right? To to see his children uh, completely be made whole, right? A uh, couple of points there. Let's look at it. Jesus eliminated any question about God's will through what he said and did, right? One of the classic example is uh, in Mark chapter one, verse forty and forty-two. We see um, Jesus responded by saying, "I will." When the leper is saying, okay, if you are willing, uh, you know, you can make me, you can make me clean, right? One of the points, important point that we looked at in the previous chapter is the leper is not questioning Jesus' ability, right? If you, you know, he's saying, if you are willing, I know you can heal me. He's saying, I know you can heal me, but are you willing? If you look at it another way. Right, and then so he's saying, "Yes, son, I'm willing. Be cleansed." 
okay um so he eliminated any question so there should be there should not be a single speck of doubt in your mind or in your heart when you look at another person or you know when you come across anyone who who god leads you to pray for whom you are led to pray for you should not think is this god's will is it god's will for me to go and pray for him absolutely yes are you with me right um so he also demonstrated that god's will is to heal all who came to him in faith okay so if you look at the notes uh, there are multiple scriptures that's mentioned there and we have read all those scriptures before in this course right from matthew chapter 4 and uh, and mark chapter 1 all the way to acts right we see that jesus healed all who came to him in faith that is important Okay, you see, time and time again, multitudes came to him in faith and they were all healed. Are you guys with me? So these two things, these two pointers are the norm, normal principle, right? It's God's will to heal everyone and, it, and, it, and he heals everyone who comes to him in faith. And then there's an exception. While he healed everyone who came to him in faith, while it is God's will to heal everyone, Jesus did not heal at random. Remember, he is God. <laughs> I'm going to keep saying that, okay? And he does whatever he pleases, okay? So having said that, right, that's the third point. Yet Jesus did not heal at random. Um, so there's a classic example of in John chapter 5, verse 1 and 9. Uh, verse 1 to 9. We're not going to read that. John chapter 5, verse 1 to 9, it talks about uh, the man healed at the pool of Bethesda, isn't it? Uh, when you read that scripture, you see it, around the pool of Bethesda, there were a lot of people, like a lot of people who were sick, you know, uh, who needed healing. But still, Jesus walks up only to this one guy. He did not have faith. He didn't come to Jesus in faith. But I but later on, if you read through the notes and we see in the chapter, he's saying, my father has not stopped working and so I am not going to stop working, is what Jesus said. Are you with me? Right? And so again, what Jesus is saying is, I will be doing what I see the father do. This is the exception. Are you guys with me? Okay. Um, and so the point here is, yes, it's God's will to heal everyone. And Jesus healed everyone who came to him in faith. But at the same time, there might be an individual, right, who is not asking for prayer or who is not seeking for prayer. Right? But what is important is that you keep your heart open uh, to see, okay, is, is does this individual need prayer? Because not everybody is going to come and ask you. It's like, pray, pray for me. Are you with me? Right, and so uh, you teach the word, you learn the word, you study the word, you encourage people, uh, you know, to come in faith uh, to receive the healing and whatnot. So that's the first thing, right? Um, the will of God. Now let's quickly look at some of the applications. Okay, it's in your notes, uh, hard copy of page one twenty-five. I think it's. Uh, Eighty-three. 83 yeah so when people are unsure about the will of god we bring them to a place where they know that it is god's will to heal them the god who forgives is also the god who heals okay highlight that if you have to remember that um, it is god's will to heal everyone and so we pray and minister to everyone Yet, we do not go about randomly or arbitrarily ministering to people. What does that mean? It's like we don't force them if you don't. You go and ask, right? You see some of these uh, you know, men of God who do this. Like, can I pray for you? They, uh, they start with a question, right? To those who don't come and ask, uh, can I pray for you? And if they say yes, we pray. And if they say no, it's like, no, I'm going to pray for you. You stand over here. You know, hold them, push them down, and all of that. You know, so, <laughs> uh, that's what's happening here, right? Yet we do not go about randomly or arbitrarily or being rude or being mean, or uh, forcing people uh, into it, right? Especially when they do not desire healing. 
right? It's uh, quite crazy that, you know, some of them don't desire healing, right? Um, we are tuned in to see what the Father is doing at the moment and what He is revealing, okay? Uh, and so it's very important for us to be uh, tuned in to what the Father is saying, what the Father is doing, um, you know, for us to minister, minister healing and deliverance. Uh, everybody okay? Yeah? All cool so far? So good? All right, the second principle is the exercise of faith. The exercise of faith. Right? Faith and compassion are possibly the two most important principles in healing ministry. Faith and compassion are like the two secret ingredients or the key ingredients um, for healing ministry. Right? Um, so we look, we turn the page and you see that. Um, all these individuals mentioned in the gospel, the Roman centurion, the paralytic, the woman with an issue of blood, uh, the two blind men, uh, the woman from Canaan, uh, the demon-possessed boy, blind Bartimaeus, uh, ten lepers, all of them came with faith to receive from Jesus, right? And then Jesus was moved with compassion, right? To some of them, he even responded saying, great is your faith. I mean, that's just a beautiful words to hear from Jesus, isn't it? Uh, if Jesus is saying, great is your faith, I mean, and he's the faithful one, right? Uh, it's just remarkable. <clears throat> but having looked at all of these things, right, faith and compassion, we also looked that there's one thing that stopped Jesus from ministering healing and deliverance. Unbelief. Unbelief. People not believing, uh, right? And we see that in uh, Matthew 13, Mark chapter 6, Matthew 17, 20, right? Um, so he could not do mighty works, that's what the Bible says, because of their unbelief, um, right? Uh, and in one of the town, especially, is saying, okay, Jesus, carpenter's son, he is doing all this. It's no chance. <laughs> Have you had anyone say that? If it's more dramatic when you use uh, Indian languages, you know, you say, you are, like that, you know, here, you put that er uh, at the end, you know, this follower, <laughs> he's traveling the world, you know. <laughs> so an attitude like that immediately stops or hinders, uh, you know, for you, from you to see what God is doing and what, what God can do, right? Are you with me? Yet, um, and so, even still, exception it says there were exceptions where Jesus ministered to people with little or no faith and they were healed or delivered. Wow. The man at the pool of Bethesda again and the man with the demon possessed uh, boy, right? Uh, the son who was called as the lunatic. Uh, and the disciples couldn't heal them. So Jesus, uh, a father, brings his son uh, and the nine disciples of Jesus, because the other three was with Jesus. Nine disciples uh, could not uh, deliver the demon possessed, and the disciples come to Jesus and say, "Lord, I could not do this." And Jesus is angry; nothing is going right at that moment. Uh, but then Jesus healed, anyways, right? Exception. Why? Because He is God. He is in heaven, and He will do. Yes, very good. <laughs> hey, you guys are learning well. Okay, good, good. Um, okay. Um, so, some of the applications. Let's look at that. Uh, we minister and receive healing with faith in our hearts, right? What is two important words there in that first point of application? Can someone tell me? Faith in our hearts. You just finished exam, no? <laughs> two words. <laughs> we minister, minister and receive. Right, so you minister in faith and you receive healing also in faith. Okay, so you don't need faith just for one. God works miracles and releases the spirit among us in response to faith. Faith is based on the word of God. So build your faith. Faith is present tense. So act on it now. Right. In other words, faith is also spelt as what? Faith is spelt risk. Don't forget that. Right. Faith is spelt risk. Okay, you got to take risk. Uh, and so the seventh point there, therefore, 
Okay, anytime there's a word called therefore, what do you do? You ask, why is it therefore? Okay. <laughs> Step out and minister to people even when you don't sense a great level of faith in yourself. Okay, you wake up this morning and say, okay, I don't feel like doing anything in life. Doesn't matter. Okay, you should still go and pray. Understood? Um, so even when you don't sense a great level of faith in yourself or in the people being ministered to, okay, um, you do what you have to do. Let God do what he has to do. You guys with me? Yeah. Um, so two points there is the will of God and the exercise of faith. Okay, exercise. You need to do. You need to act on it. You just can't say, "I have faith. I have faith. I have faith. I have faith." Oh, look at me. I have faith. I have faith, and not do anything about it. Okay, um, it's present tense. You need to act on it. That's why it's called an exercise. Right? You can't say, "I'm working out, doing exercise by sleeping on the bed." Right? It's like I'm working out. <laughs> you know, but how are you working out? I'm working out by sleeping. You know. <laughs> That's also work, is it? <laughs> okay, exercise of faith. You need to act on it. You need to work. Okay, you need to step out and take that step of faith, as they say. Okay, and the third principle is the flow of compassion. Flow of compassion. A um, few examples in the notes is Jesus had compassion on the multitudes. Jesus was moved with compassion and healed people. Jesus was moved with compassion and fed the multitudes. Jesus had compassion and healed the blind man. Jesus moved with compassion and healed the leper. The demoniac was delivered, was a demonstration of God's compassion. Oh boy. Exceptions. Okay, this is awesome. Jesus was angered and grieved with people in the house. In the temple, that is, and he still proceeded to heal the paralyzed men. Okay, exception. This is a classic and an awesome exception. Okay, this is an amazing point to prove that he does what he pleases. It's right here, right? So he goes to the temple and he sees all these, you know, money vendors in the temple. You remember where Jesus turned the tables up? Jesus got angry. Yeah, it's true. Okay, it's in the Bible. Jesus got angry. Okay, oh, you know, you see all these paintings of Jesus and all. It's you know, it's like you know, Jesus is pavam, like you know, he's he's like a shepherd. He's always hugging or something like that. Okay, there's no, I haven't seen a single painting with Jesus throwing the tables or with a whip in his hands. I haven't seen. If anybody can paint, please do one and give it to me. Okay, <laughs> right, but look at that. Okay, Jesus has lost it. He is angry. Right, you know, you have tables in front of you. <laughs> You want to start doing that? Okay, you know, a demonstration in class. Let's do it, guys. Come on, you know. So, <laughs> so Jesus is in that kind of, uh, you know, he's in that state of mind. He's angry that his, the people have turned the father's house and made it into a den of thieves. Right? That's that's why he's angry. He's turned. He's upset. But still. He went ahead and he healed, right? Uh, the paralytic. It's in Mark chapter three, verse one to five. It's uh, it's just something beautiful uh, for us to, you know, keep in mind. Another thing: Jesus and his disciples did not appear very compassionate with the Canaanite woman. Yet she received healing for her daughter in Matthew chapter fifteen. Um, so we all know that story. Yes, yeah, we all know it, right? So she comes, he, uh, you know, asking for healing, and then in Jesus is like, instead of healing, he's giving a theological speech, saying like, you know, I actually came for the lost sheep of Israel, and <laughs> uh, and then she is like, yeah, okay, I don't need your theology doctrine, I just need the healing. Uh, <laughs> Jesus didn't sound very compassionate when he's talking about it. He's like, how can I take the, you know, the and give your children's bread and give it to the dogs and stuff like that? It's like, what is happening? You know? <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, but then again, he is God. He he does what he pleases. Okay, so he healed. Uh, right? There's a couple of exceptions there. So application, you look at it. We must increase in compassion for the sick, 
hurting and oppressed. Uh, ask this question for yourself in every day of your life, in your, in in you know, be it in ministry or not, uh, you know, as a Christian, uh, it's super crucial to ask ourselves: um, Am I moving in compassion? Am I leading the people I am leading in compassion? Right? Am I serving those? That I'm serving, am I doing it out of compassion or am I doing it because I can get a salary or I can get some favor and whatnot? Right? Um, so compassion, whatever it is, uh, what's the Hindi word for compassion? Compassion. Compassion, uh, Hindi word. Uh, anybody online? And because nobody here seems to know what the Hindi word for compassion is. <laughs> Taras, Daya, Wada, see, okay. So Nina says, Taras, is that, I'm going to ask them if it's the right, Nina. I'm, that, that does not mean I'm doubting you, okay? I'm just, you know. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Okay, so you understood what it is right now. Okay, so do you have Karuna or do you have? <laughs> uh, Karuna is also a girl's name, isn't it? Okay, so be careful when you <laughs> ask yourself that question. <laughs> awesome, thank you, thanks Nina, thanks Karen. Okay, um, so application, right? We must increase in compassion for the sick, hurting, and oppressed. There is emotional suffering. Uh, you might want to highlight that if you want to. There is emotional suffering involved in healing ministry as you feel compassion for the people who are sick and hurting. Um, so th this is again a very important key point for us as young leaders, uh, you know, is uh, there is, uh, it takes a toll, as they say, on your uh, mental uh, thing. So as you keep hearing all these uh, and I've heard some of these professional counselors say, because all, all day long, what they do, they sit and just have people come and tell them how miserable their life is. <laughs> it's the truth, isn't it? Uh, it's saying, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. One person, next person comes and says, okay, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. My family is going through this. And the next person comes and says, I'm going through this, I'm going through that. And you are sitting there and listening to all of this. You're processing all of this. And at the end of the day, you are mentally exhausted. You're mentally tired, right? It takes the tolls. And it's the same thing. Uh, and, it, and you see that in Mark chapter 7, verse 32, 35. Uh, and just look at verse 34. And, you know, OK, let's read that. Then they brought to him one who was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they begged him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude. He put his fingers in his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Verse 34. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ifhatha, that is, be opened. Okay. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed. He, he did this. <sighs> be opened. <laughs> As in, you know, so don't uh, live in denial thinking that okay ministry is all bed and roses you know it's all fine it's all cool uh, but as you keep hearing uh, you know people's problems because it 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 has some kind of a weight to it um, you will feel drained but then that should not stop us from ministering again jesus did not stop right um so let's move on to the next point are you guys with me are you learning something yes no maybe Okay, cool. So the next principle after the flow of compassion is the anointing of the Holy Spirit, right? The anointing of the Holy Spirit um, is this again to stress a couple of points. Jesus did everything what he did on earth with the power of the Holy Spirit, right? Everything what he did, he did with the power of the Holy Spirit. He was sensitive to the move of God. He was sensitive to his voice. He was sensitive to the leading of God's voice, right? And we are encouraged to, and that's the norm, 
right we are what's the norm and the normal is we are expected to walk being sensitive to the holy spirit to the to his voice to the leading of his voice but then there are exceptions right uh, for example in uh, when you look at the uh, the in the notes you see it says uh, the lord jesus did not always have the great environment to minister under the anointing often he was surrounded by the pharisees scribes and sadducees okay you are not always going to have a beautiful pads being played for the atmosphere to feel is like oh wow it's amazing i feel the holy spirit now okay c major pads this warm pads just play it okay <laughs> and then like, oh goosebumps you know in the back uh, <laughs> It's because it's, it's real, you know. Uh, you're, I am sorry, okay. Uh, you are not always going to have that kind of an atmosphere for you to minister in healing and deliverance, right? Uh, like I said, Jesus was surrounded by Pharisees, Sadducees, people who wanted to judge him, find fault in him, uh, right? And also, there is another example in um, Mark chapter 5, verse 30 about the woman with the issue of blood, right? People were like, there was a crowd of people around Jesus, like full rush and whatnot. I mean, that's not the perfect uh, environment, isn't it? But he is God. He does what he pleases, right? He can do what he please. And so if we walk with that intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit, we don't need warm pads, worship pads, as we call it, right? Um, good environment or or not he can move through us amen amen okay so a couple of applications let's look at it the anointed person god anoints people to bring healing to the sick and oppressed we need to pray for more power more compassion and more humility i read this verse uh, phrase somewhere it says more the anointing uh, there should be more humility okay uh, we must come into a place of greater anointing so that we can see greater healings and deliverance. Right, God, I need more anointing. Would you be willing to pay the price? Um, pressing for more. Uh, the unrecognized person. There are times God can and will use people whom we may not consider as anointed as channels of his healing power. They simply minister in his name based on his word and faith in his word. Okay, the unrecognized person. I, you haven't seen a single poster of this person on Facebook or on the roads. Um, you know, no TV channel in their name, no famous ministry in their name. Will you be willing to be prayed by that person? Uh, feeling the anointing. There are times when we can have a tangible feeling. Okay, listen to those words. There are times when we can have a tangible feeling of the anointing. And there are times we do not feel anything. Whether there is feeling or no feeling, we minister by? We minister by? By faith. Awesome. Okay, so that's the point on anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we move to the next principle, the issue of sin and salvation. The issue of sin and salvation uh, it's a very simple and a fairly straightforward point is what this point talks about is uh and the point that gibbs asked quite a lot is okay you pray for this person's healing but what about their salvation you get what you know what i'm saying right um so jesus functioned in both ways there are times where he healed and then he uh you know spoke about salvation and then there are times where he addresses the sin issue Right? and then heals. But most of the times, we see that Jesus preached repentance. Right, He preached repentance, he preached, and then goes about ministering, healing, and deliverance. But just let's take a look at it. Um, so the one incident when Jesus dealt with sin first and then healed afterwards was in Mark chapter 2, verse 1. It says, Son, your sins are forgiven you. And then said, Arise, Take up your bed and go to your house. Okay, so forgiveness of sins is nothing but what? Salvation, isn't it? Right? And then he talks about arise, 
take a bed and go to your house. That is ministering um, healing. Um, let's come down to another passage in John chapter 9. Jesus said, see, you have been made well. Now here, Jesus is healing first. Said so Jesus, uh, saying, see, you have been made well. Sin no more. Right? Are you following us? Okay, so um, what I wanted to take out from this point is like sin and salvation is, um, if I have to put it in a very simple terms, is you don't say, I will pray for you only if you're a Christian or only if you're saved or only if you're baptized in the water or only if you're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Hey, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Only then I'm going to pray for you. Otherwise, shoo, shoo. <laughs> Right? Um, so that's not how we function. Uh, we pray, right? We minister healing and deliverance regardless, right? and then present the gospel, isn't it? And that's the goal, isn't it? That everybody uh, is saved. We see that, them, uh, that their souls are saved and added to the kingdom of God, right? Um, so, application we should not attribute every sickness to some sin in the individuals. And there are times when God heals even before the issue of sin and salvation has been dealt with. Second point, that is. There are times when God heals even before the issue of sin and salvation has been dealt um, with. There may be times when God will specifically lead you to deal with the issue of sin and salvation. So look at those words there. There may be times that God will specifically lead you. So if he's leading, the question should be, are you following? Isn't it? If God is leading you, a simple question is, are you following? Right? Are you sensitive enough to the leading of his voice, to hear his voice? Okay. And if God heals before the sin uh, has been dealt with, reach out to see the person experience the greatest of all miracles, the experience of salvation. Okay, um, so that's the five, fifth principle, the issue of sin and uh, salvation. So what we've covered so far um, from the first one is the will of God, right? Jesus eliminated every single doubt or question that is related to God's will, to healing, ministering, healing, and deliverance. Second principle is the exercise of faith, okay? Step out in faith, um, okay? And the flow of compassion, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the issue of sin and salvation. Now, again, just this is all to remind us, uh, the title of this chapter is Learning to Minister Healing and Deliverance from Jesus. Now, these are all the principles that Jesus himself followed, right? That's what we are learning. Okay, and now let's look at some of the methods Jesus used, right? Some of the methods that Jesus used. Um, there was no specific process or method Jesus used to minister healing and deliverance. He just did what he saw the Father do. Okay? Um, so, but in the Gospels, we see that he laid hands and, and prayed and ministered healing. And he commanded by the word, uh, laying, on the ha laying on of hands plus the word of command. Sick people touched him. Right? It's not just he went about touching. But sick people also touched him and they were healed. Uh, he's he's he had people act in faith. Okay, look at that point. He had people act in faith by saying, "Go wash in the pool, rise up and walk, and so on." You guys, with me? So he he gave instructions: do this, act on your faith, and they obeyed and they were healed. He ministered healing through deliverance, uh, unusual methods. Okay, just remember, guys, Psalm 115, verse 3. Okay, <laughs> spit clay, fingers and ears, tongue, uh, touch, touch the tongue, etc., etc. No. Um, he healed from a distance. That means he just said the word, I remember to his word to the centurion. Uh, he says, just, you know, command and uh, he'll be healed. He declared the work as done and told the person to go in faith. He sent his disciples to anoint with oil. Other methods not recorded for us. Um, 
Now, in the beginning of this course, is one thing we mentioned about the methods. What is it? It's not about the method, it's about the person. Right? Um, it's, I mean, these are all the examples of how Jesus ministered, right? We, 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 we lay our hands and pray as well, but that doesn't mean people will get healed only if you lay your hands and pray, right? So please keep this in mind, is that ministering, healing, and deliverance is not based on a method, but it's based on what, what you're hearing the Father tell you to do at that moment, and it is based on the person of Jesus. Are you with me? Yes? Uh, you know, I've, I've heard... Um, you know, people who uh, minister with oil and uh, people also who minister with water or whatnot. It's just a symbol, isn't it? It's a symbol and it's an action of obedience. Are you with me? Right? So let's just look at a couple of uh, applications there. Uh, we recognize and equip ourselves in the most common ways to minister healing and deliverance. When we minister, we use uh, any one of the common ways available um, to us. Um, right now, you, you lay your hands. That's one of the common ways that where you minister to people. But again, like I said, it's not the only way. You can ask the people. And sometimes people are not com comfortable with that. It's absolutely fine, right? And especially when you're praying for the opposite sex, uh, you know, it's very important for you that you ask their permission. Uh, you know, if it's because if they're not feeling appropriate about it, it's fine, it's okay. Uh, but you're just doing, using one of the common ways to uh, minister healing and deliverance. Um, we remain sensitive to the Lord's guidance by His Holy Spirit and do things differently when He guides us to do so. Um, we do not focus on any one method or process. We remember that healing and deliverance comes from the Lord and not because of the method or process that is used to minister. Let's look at the fourth point. We teach people not to focus on the method or process, but on the person of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Okay, so keep that in mind. It's not a very difficult point for us to remember, is it? Okay, um, that's the sixth one. And finally, the seventh one is the nature of supernatural healing. The nature of supernatural healing healing so whenever jesus ministered healing and deliverance we noticed that the miracles were one immediate that means the miracle took place right then and there uh, miracles were complete the individuals were completely healed and delivered it was his healings were verifiable that means uh, jesus said go and show you know to 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 the priests and let them check um Okay, people could check and see that the miracles was genuine. Glorify God, not man. The focus was on God. Always, it was should always be on Him, um, and not on us. Are you with me? So this is the standard that Jesus is calling us. There is a place, a level of anointing that is available for all of us to step into, to walk into, to minister healing just the way Jesus ministered, right? Um, to come to a place where when we pray, people are healed immediately, people are made whole completely and verifiable and who give glory to God, right? Are you guys with me? Yes? Um, okay, Nina says, Perfection is low in action. Okay. So Nina says, uh, though it doesn't adequately explain, since compassion is love in action, karuna is mercy. Hey, guys, karuna is mercy. Oh. Nikhil. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, let's just pause here for this session, and we'll come back and we'll look at the, into the next chapter. Is it? Okay. okay. I, I, I believe you. <laughs> Awesome. All right, guys, so what we'll do, we'll pause here, we'll take a break, and we'll come back for the next session. Okay? Thanks, everyone.